this is the um, the yaw system. This houses the stepper motor for the yaw system with the two gears to drive the the cam. There's the stepper motor. This is like a, a cross sectional cut of it. There's like these teeth on this outer ring, and so when you energize them, they they'll jump to the next position, which is like stepping. And so it allows for very precise movement of the stepper motor. The, the stepper motor will spin the cam to adjust for wind direction. This cam controls the pitch of the airfoils and the arrow needs to be pointing into the wind direction. We have a wind vane made from an absolute rotor encoder with 300 counts per revolution. This is that rotary encoder down here with that wind, the wind vane. The motor will turn in one direction until the hull sensor finds the magnet and then it will match the arrow with the direction of the wind vane. There's these rollers here and they are on this cam surface. Eccentric cam is not, you know, circular to the rotation of the shaft. And so what that does is throughout the rotation, it's changing the, the pitch of the airflows. The shaft goes through this section, which has the motor in it. And then this section has these two bearings, which the shaft spins on. This is the bearings. So it's just, there's two bearings. There's one here, one here, and then the shaft just goes through it. There's the generator. This is the gearbox. The gearbox is about 88% efficient, so we're losing about 12% power through the gearbox. For it being a 3D printed gearbox, it's pretty good. It's about 10% lower than what you would find in a standard planetary gearbox. Basically, we have the turbine built up until this point right here. Uh, we just didn't get to this lower section, and so that's the point that bolts onto that box. The box is basically just kind of a part of the, the wind tunnel to support the turbine. All right, so for the generator, which is at the wind turbine, that's generating something called alternating current. And the rest of our system needs to be in direct current. So we use a device called a rectifier, which basically just turns alternating current into direct current. Then we send that direct current through what's called DC current monitor, which just tells us how fast the current is moving. And that's, we send that information to our central Arduino system. That's one of the pieces of data we use to kind of control and modify the system. The other piece of data that we use to control the system is from the Hall effect sensor, which is attached to the generator on the wind turbine. It's built into our particular generator. And what a Hall effect sensor does, it just tells us the RPM, how fast it's spinning. And so we can use that rotational speed along with the current and a bunch of math equations to figure out how we want the rest of the circuit to uh, behave. And the way we adjust that is through the controlled variable load down at the bottom. And what that has inside of it, it's a number of different resistors that are arrayed in parallel kind of next to each other. And we can turn on and off however many of the resistors we want, which basically changes the overall resistance value that the circuit sees, which changes the current and a number of other values. We want to create the optimal power output and changing this will change what's called torque on the generator. And if we can balance that torque value on the generator side against what the uh, wind turbine is seeing on the blades, we can get it closer to a optimal power output. Adjusting this can also act as a bit of a break because if we increase the torque, then that just makes it harder for the turbine to spin, so that helps us slow it down. Also attached to our Arduino is our yaw system, and the yaw system is essentially related to making the turbine face forward. The wind you know, it changes, comes from all sorts of directions. Our particular turbine has a, a front to it. Most turbines do. They want to face into the wind. Ours does have a front, so that yaw system will basically take information from a little fin that's attached to it to figure out the wind direction, and then it'll send that information to the Arduino to to say, hey, adjust it in this direction. Um, that's pretty much what the YAW system does.
the, the wind tunnel that we put together can try to get up to about 11 meters per second. But the equipment that we have, we don't think we should push it any higher than that. So it's hard for us to test the turbine durability beyond those wind speeds. But when everything was all connected together, it, it did not go as planned. Our turbine is not spinning because the generator and gearbox system has a large resistive torque. You have to spin it a lot to get it going. So the generator has a large, it's called a cogging torque. And the gearbox takes that and quadruples it. So basically it's just it's so much force that it's hard to turn it even with your hands and the turbine's not gonna spin it either. If we take the generator and gearbox out and just spin the rotors, then it will spin up. The problem we're having is the gearbox has a really high gear ratio. The rotor part of the turbine cannot spin the gearbox in order to spin the generator. We need the gearbox to spin the generator fast enough to produce the power we need. If we want to make a spin, we need to lower the resistive torque of our power system. We didn't have lab access until really three weeks before the competition. If we got it done earlier than that, then we could probably have work something out, got a different gearbox or something. But we only had the parts on hand at the moment, and that wasn't enough to get it working. When we were getting it up to 50 miles an hour, <laughs> that was attached to the generator, which is a fabulous braking system, but as a power system, it's just not working. And it won't with that gearbox setup. Honestly, it's, it's so obvious that you can just twist it with your hands. There was no prior testing involved. We did actually, we ran dynamometer tests on the generator just to kind of measure how large the torque was and it's, it's enormous. The car is faster but we're less flexible. With, like in the wind tunnel, you can turn a dial and decide exactly how fast you want it to go. In the parking lot, uh, you kind of, you push the gas down, you go as fast as you can. <laughs> And then you slow down because you're going to hit something. <laughs> so you try to get it up to higher speeds to see if it would spin. But it, we got it up to 50 miles an hour. It wasn't spinning and we were worried about damaging it. When we put it on the car, what happened is the arms of the top of the turbine and the arms of the bottom were going at a little bit different speeds. And they exerted a torque on the blades. They twisted the blades mm -hmm. and they sheared connection between the different three different parts that we glued together. Huh. And we, did, we totally forgot to test for torsion. <laughs> it snapped because our blades are 3D printed. We intended to make them out of carbon fiber, which is really strong, but we couldn't get that done without proper lab access. So we 3D printed them, and I actually, I didn't expect those to work at all. I was really surprised when they resisted. We loaded it down with 60 pounds and it was, it didn't break. I was amazed. I thought it was break at 10 pounds. This is a good starting point for next year because we spent so much of our time getting the rotor built that we didn't have time to troubleshoot. But now that we know what the problem is, next year's team will be able to take what we have and move the system that doesn't work. They can get a better gearbox, get a generator that has a lower torque. Because basically what we have to do is we have to get everything running and we expect the turbine to spin much faster than it currently was. Yeah, that would be that would be a good next test is to test it on the car without the without the gearbox.